apart and hopefully put them back together. Now, I've got a phone call right in the middle of my review. Hang five. Hello, Derek here, how can I help? Hi and welcome back to my office. We're looking at tripods today because one of my viewers asked me what tripod do I use for photographing wildlife? Well, I actually have two tripods, one for photographing and one for filming wildlife. And you can buy both of them still. So I thought, hey, I haven't actually done a review on it. And I don't actually know why I haven't done a review on them. So I thought it was time that I did. So you can, yes, you can still buy these. So I thought it's worthwhile doing a review on them. So I'll have a look at why I've bought them for, <sighs> and everything else that goes with it. So we're looking at what I used to photograph wildlife with. This is a Vanguard tripod, and I was a little bit lazy. I didn't uh, check exactly the weight and everything like that before I come out here. So I'll just splash it up on the screen somewhere and you can check out the rest of the details. It's serial code and all those sort of things. Help save time as well. Right, so let's have a look at why I bought this tripod for. Now when I'm looking for a tripod, I want something that's rugged, that's tough, because it's going to get tortured by me. I don't tend to look after tripods very well. I bring my gear home, put it in my room, and I tend to forget about them. So it has to be tough. One of the things that's got to last, at least, well, I should say really, that um, when I buy a tripod, I'm looking at its lifespan, probably going to at least six years. Now hopefully you're not getting any issues in that time and it'll last at least six years before we start to get any problems with clamps and things like that. I think that's pretty fair, especially the torture that I put them under. All right, so we go down the beach, put them in the sand and in the ocean, in, in rivers and stuff like that where we're taking landscape shots. It's got to be tough and rugged. These legs should, this is what I'm looking for in a tripod, when I first buy them is that they will unpack quickly. Now this particular one is a little sticky and I keep forgetting when I go home to service it. But hopefully I will today, <laughs> remember. All right, these are the clamp style. I much prefer clamp style. Untwisting just takes a little longer, so I avoid them. I've also had one in the past it didn't take long before I got a lot of rubbish and crap inside them and you got to pull them apart and try and put them back together again. So these are much better, for, I, I think. Uh, very quick and simple device and they generally work well. And this has proved to be quite tough and worked really well except for that one leg. So they all drop down quite easily. So this is the... One of the reasons why I bought this tripod for, they look like they would go the distance and they have proven, has proven to be the case. They have lasted really well. All right, so I've got them all clamped down and the big test after uh, five years is you should be able to push down really, really hard. And yes, they are good. Now it's not a tall tripod, it's just something I wanted to um, for in the reserve when I'm photographing in a fixed position so I'm not getting my, my arms tired waiting for something to turn up or making big movements and scaring my subject. So when I'm photographing the Agile Endocrinus, this is how I'll have my camera sitting on the tripod ready for action. Now something else that's important to me is a quick release, which it has. 
works really well have no issues with that at all it is quick and efficient so let's grab the 7D Mark II and check it out on the tripod so that nice quick release so when I'm photographing the Agile I have a stage set up I'm waiting for it to turn up and all of a sudden it runs up the tree and doing something unusual quick release portrait shot bang put it back because it's run down the tree and it's coming back in front of me quick easy and efficient no issues with that it's lasting now the other big reason why I bought this tripod is out of all the others that went shot it's the only one that had this twisting head and I thought, oh yes, that's what I want. To be able to do portrait shots, that is an essential piece of equipment that I need. All we're simply doing is that, ready to go. Now I just use the level on the camera screen there to set it up so that I can check it out and make sure, do a little adjustments, and it's done. It's a very basic tripod. It doesn't have a level on it. And actually, levels don't last long. Every tripod that I've had, including the one that I'm using for videoing myself with now, they don't last more than a couple of years. They just die. <laughs> now there is a bubble on the top, but it gets covered by a clamp. So I just use the level on the camera and it's fine. Basic, it's all I wanted, a tough, basic tripod and that's what I've got. It's lasting really well. Now we can extend this. Yeah, it's up to my chest, so it's not a very tall tripod. It's just something that's great to be able to pack away, put on the back of the backpack, and hike around the scrub. As far as lightweight goes, it is not lightweight. It's aluminium, but, it, but it's okay. It's not massively weighty. It's okay. All right, so we can come right up with that. If we're doing a landscape shot. I have found it uh, quite handy to be able to get it up to my eye height. Might be a bit of rubbish in front of you. You want to get the camera up and over the top of it. It is a toughie. It's a beauty. Quick release, twist head, turn it around, back so we can do a portrait shot very quickly, easily and efficiently. Let's move on from this tripod and have a look at what I use to video wildlife. There are always planes going over whenever I try to do a review. Alright, so this is the Francia details up there this is not particularly a lightweight tripod it however has proven to be quite tough as well and it's gone the distance without too many issues seven years old it's gone past what I consider to a usable time and I'm due to renew it, it uh, yeah it's it's time for me to buy a new one. So I will look at that as the year rolls on. But it is a good tripod. It has served me well. When I'm carting this around, the spreader in the middle, when folded up, gives me the right spot to put my legs so I can quickly, efficiently pack up and put this thing on my shoulder. It means that where I hold onto it is in exactly the right position, that clamp. Nice and comfortable to hold. It's comfortable on my shoulder. I can even wear a t-shirt and it doesn't bite in. It's a sturdy tripod. Again, it's chest height. It is not a tall tripod. But, so this suited me with price range. And the, yeah, the height wasn't really a big issue. As long as it come up to there, that's not bad. But push those legs in. And it 
comes up just under my eye line. Put the video camera on you know, up around my eye line and that's pretty well much what we want. Now we have a ball head on here which is essential for filming when you're out in the bush. A lot of times you're on funny angles so having the head move, being able to move it around just gives you that extra bit of adjustment. And the reason why I have two tripods, one for filming, is smooth movements. Stable, get the legs out wide like that, and I can just move around and have beautiful movement, whether I'm tilting, panning, whatever I'm doing. The only thing that I hate on fluid heads is, is when they have a memory. Now I was trying to avoid having one with uh, a memory head, but unfortunately, where I bought this tripod off on the internet, on their specs, they neglected to put on that it had a memory head. So I was a little pissed off and disappointed once I started using it. So what happens with memory heads is it's a type of self-leveling type thing. And it's weird, annoying, especially when you're tr something's happening in front of you, you quickly put the legs down, you get it set up, you've got seconds to get this shot. And I've tightened everything up, and as soon as you tighten everything up, and I've started filming, all of a sudden, that memory head goes up, across, and down. Back to where you started from. And it, ah, oh, it's annoying. So you've missed out on crucial part of your film, two birds fighting, whatever it is, because of this stupid memory thing. So you keep it in your memory when you're looking for a tripod with a fluid head. Don't get one with a memory on it. It'll drive you nuts. After 12 months, that started to drop off. It didn't do it as much. And as time went on, it's completely gone. Thank goodness for that. But anyway, after that, it is a good head. It is still really fluid and um, I have no issues with it. It is really good to use. It does have a level on it, bubble level. You can see that. After uh, 12 months, the fluid disappeared out of it. <laughs> Don't know why, but it had. That so does make it a little bit of a pain, but the um, camera has a level in it as well. All the cameras that I've had, video cameras, have all had that. Uh, on the screen so you can level it up reasonably well not so bad and I'm pretty good with my eye as well because I'm in the building trade I can see that it's not right anyway an added bonus that came along with my other tripod the Vanguard one was the base is the same size as this a little tight but it fits Slides on, press the button in that locks it into place, well, stops it sliding out if you forget to clamp it tight. So it's good, works well. Added bonus, so that means I just take one tripod. I do that a lot, I'm not always taking two tripods out, or I actually forgot that tripod. It's not a worry. I just chuck it on this, swap them over. It's very easy. Not that hard. Uh, just that great added bonus. Been able to not worry about changing bases all the time. Because things happen in front of you, you want to be quick and efficient. Right, we haven't talked about the clamps. They are lasting. They have, they're still going really well. And again, we want those legs to drop quickly. So, back we can go. Bang. Whoops, didn't crack that one in. <laughs> Drop it down, start filming. That's what we need. You don't want to be mucking around. <sighs> Things that have been happening to it, problems. There's only two and it, it comes down to being more vigilant <laughs> than anything else and regularly servicing, which I've already stated that I forget about doing a lot. 
we have these spreaders clamps to cut you know, so you can tighten in the position so they don't move um because i have them loose so that i can be quick yeah quickly get my tripod down and being able to get it into a good position like that's so that's sturdy quickly and efficiently uh i lost one because it wasn't tightened up enough so i've just improvised for now and it's the same with the head I've lost the tightener on there the little levers like that yeah, it's gone my own fault I didn't uh, check on it now the thing with these clamps on the ball head they started not clamping tight enough so what I had to do was take the screw out, shift the head around, and put it further forward, so that I could pull it back even further to clamp it. Seven years old, you've got to expect a little bit of wear and tear, and I haven't had to do it again. That was probably about two years ago I did that. And they've been all right, they're still clamping nice and tight. But that's probably the only issue that I've had as far as uh, wear and tear, those things there. Now I must say, which I've neglected to talk about while I had 7D Mark II on, was when I'm using it for photographing, that um, is a bit of a pain, especially now I don't have that unclamp because you can actually pull that lever right down and get it out of the way if you need, or have it up higher, however you want to configure it. I can't do that. It's it's loose, you can turn the whole thing around like that uh, and it should be nice and tight. Yeah, there's a lot of movement in there. And stop laughing at me. I oh, know, it's my own fault. Uh, so that's a bit of a pain. And normally I would put that out of the way when I'm photographing wildlife. Uh, yeah, agile in a fixed position. I put it under my arm like that which is okay if you're pushing it down. I'm simply just pushing my weight down on it. But I've got to hold onto the camera and push the camera down to get it in the right position. And it's awkward too when you're sitting down while it's like that. Uh, you're sitting down in, it's just in the way, it's just a pain. My own fault. It's been a great tripod, still available, tough rugged those clamps are still working but i will have to replace it this year that's for sure uh, i'd much rather have those unclampable legs at the top unclippable i should say so that you can uh, get it into a different position lay it down really low uh, this does pack away fairly small clamping it uh, so it does a bit more compact but I find so many times I want it a hell of a lot lower so if I could my next one those legs could just go into a different position a much flatter position and not have a spreader would be a much better thing for me oh the old last thing on the list that I forgot about is the legs we get those rubber covers for when I'm inside. And they're great. They're wide and um, they come off. Because they're rubber, they come off really easy. Work really well. Don't, I don't use them very often. Don't really film myself inside very often, but occasionally I do. So they're handy. Uh, good spikes, don't find them a trouble, especially on rocks and things like that, because there's the two on, on each leg. Um, Slippery rocks and stuff like that seems to be quite work quite well. So that is my review on my tripods, Vanguard and the Francia, two pretty good companies. Would I recommend these two tripods? Yes, I would. They're tough, rugged. They're basic. Nothing fancy about them. They're just good, solid tripods. 
So that's all I've got for you today. If you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get a notification whenever I do anything else if you press the bell that's next to it as well. Now, if you want to have a look at all the things I've been doing over the years, click on my icon down below. I talk about camera stuff, camera accessories, some reviews on equipment that I've bought over the years, photography tips. Yeah, the list goes on and on and on. Go and have a browse. There must be something there of interest to you. Now, just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.